Hello brothers and sisters, it has been a few months since I logged into my YouTube channel and the past few weeks I noticed a lot of drama around Lloyd Evans. Everywhere I look, Lloyd Evans said this, Lloyd cheated on his wife, Lloyd is with lady boys in Thailand, what is going on? And admits to and confesses that he has regularly cheated on his wife with prostitutes for the last four years. What the f***? For real. Crazy and disgusting what he's done. Lloyd putting it down overseas? Oh man, talk about spreading the good news of the kingdom and all the inhabited earth. Fair, and it did come at a very hard time when you said that you were feeling suicidal and you felt like you were depressed. This girl isn't even an XJW. She's from a different cult and she recognizes something is going on. But I watched that video and I heard him talk and his language speaking to speaking to people on the live is the exact same language that people, leaders in the church would use. It's the same victim blaming. It's the same like oppressive language. It's what about me? I'm the victim. Yes, you caught me doing something bad, but isn't it your fault for saying that I'm bad? And it's sort of this gaslighting turnaround. Holy shit. This is some hot dicks, bro. What the fuck? I go straight to his YouTube channel. And at the time of recording this, I see a stream of him explaining. It's a video I don't want to make. I'm not sat in front of three elders. It's nobody's business. Apparently, you, you will need to know what, what I do with my dick. <laughs> yes, I cheated on my wife, saintly Brandon, who's never done anything wrong in his life and has always had total mastery over his penis. For real? I'm here to tell you that we're all imperfect and we all make mistakes and we all have to deal with fucked up situations to the best of our ability. And my fucked up situation was that I had my sexuality tampered with. <laughs> Alien encounters, fuck you. <laughs> Fake crying, blaming his past, playing the victim? Wait, what? And engagement with prostitutes on a very regular basis. It was maybe, I'm gonna say two or three months in between, I would go to see sex workers. I'm gonna say three or four years. If that's many years, then fine. Amongst other matters that don't need to be specifically mentioned. What did he say? Hey, hey brothers and sisters, Cameron here. <laughs> Mainly we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to catch up on. Um, some shit has been happening and a lot of it. Holy fuck. These are some S tier hot takes, bro. All of a sudden, my really bad experience with Lloyd that happened a while ago hit me like a ton of bricks. Have you ever wondered why people don't like Lloyd Evans? He always says that the people who don't like him are jealous and just act like Watchtower. I've long said, both in my book and on this channel, that ironically, the biggest pushback to my activism work has only ever come from fellow ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, or even resentful, especially if it's someone who's grown a large audience that we may personally feel they don't deserve. This isn't your average video about my opinion on Lloyd Evans' situation. This is a review on repeated patterns, behaviors, interactions with people who have worked with or gotten close to Lloyd Evans. All right, everyone, tuck your head between your legs, prepare to see your butthole, and kiss your cheeks goodbye, because this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> What's that? Girl, that's a booty hole. Spoiler warning, the gist of this video is I'm cranky. I would like for you all to remember two words that we will come back to later, behaviors and patterns. After posting a couple of videos in September 2016 and being awake for only a few months, highly inspired by demon man Ray Franz, rest in peace, who sadly passed away in 2010, Paul Grundy of JW Facts, Spoon Fed No More, and eventually I found John Cedar's channel, aka Lloyd Evans. I was finally awake and allowing myself to watch videos of people debunking many of the lies we were taught and being forced to grow up as a little Jehovah's Witness kid the picture of me as a kid. Ray Franz changed my life. The OG, the godfather, the big PP, top energy, the goat, if you will. So many others did. You don't hear about prostitute stories about them. So I was in transition from being Christian to agnostic atheist, so I was saw eye to eye with much of what he had to say. I liked the guy and I was excited to see his work. Lloyd made a lot of great points. He was a big Star Wars nerd and had just come out with a book. He was planning on doing a meetup in San Francisco, which was very close to me. I was like, oh shit, oh heck. 
I must meet him. He's like the biggest XJW YouTuber. Nobody was doing what he was doing and he was standing up to Watchtower. He labeled himself the voice of the silent majority. He seemed like a logical ex-elder kind of guy in that sexy accent. Do it again. <laughs> oh, oh my God, Mo, do it, do it, so sexy. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God, oh, giggle for me, Mo, oh. Mo, do it. <laughs> Don't stop yeah. us, shit. Nonetheless, I was pumped to get involved in activism, meeting the dude and his cute little daughter and sweet wife. Before meeting him, I made a YouTube video talking about how excited I was and what questions did you want me to ask Lloyd, because not everyone was going to have the chance to meet him. I started getting really good comments, but some crazy comments from people I don't even know saying to ask Lloyd when I see him about him chatting online with underage girls. A few moments later. During this time, Lloyd and I were talking on Facebook early on to my awakening. Mostly small grateful chat and I had between the old chum. Lloyd even said that he'd love to have me on his channel, something I wasn't expecting at all or asked for. I made the vlog and I met Lloyd. It was awesome. I remember seeing him and asking him to give him a big hug. Deanna was a sweetheart and her daughter was adorable. The meetup was an experience I won't forget. I also only had $15 in cash and Lloyd's book was 20 and he gave it to me for 15. When the comments came in, he asked me to delete the comments. My first gut reaction to this, and not having any experience in defending myself or really how to communicate well, I looked at the comments. They were making fun of Lloyd and calling him a chesty, the molesty. I went straight to the source to Lloyd and, I, and he balked at the idea when I asked him what was this all about. I felt like I had just gotten out of a cult and didn't want to be going into another cult. Instead, he told me to delete the comments as a protection to him. As someone who had only been awake for a few months and also known as Fifth, who was being called racist remarks in the comments. I gladly blocked, deleted, yeeted these strange, aggressive weirdos online among some of these people making these accusations against Lloyd, and they seem very angry at me. Made an angry video of me interviewing Lloyd, screaming at me in the footage. I don't know how his viewers and all his fans and the people that are interviewing him, you raise the question, they delete it! Tell me why! Yeah. Cameron Fader, when people were raising questions about John Cedars in his own words, Sexting underage children, Cameron Sater deleted those questions instead of answering them. Why? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because they haven't changed. They are. What is the difference between you and one of the jackasses in the Kingdom Hall? Not a fucking thing. They got insanely mad and said that I knew what I was doing and I was deleting the comments and I was just as guilty as Lloyd. I don't know about you, but when someone verbally attacks you and then expects you to understand their side, it comes off as a little crazy. After I went back to Lloyd and asked him to address this and protect me as well, this group had released a video attacking my name and I felt like an innocent bystander. Lloyd, and he told me that he would protect me. Lloyd released a statement shortly after where he protected himself, attacked the attackers, and left me completely out of the equation. I felt like I had been stepped on by Lloyd's double chin. What the fuck, Lloyd? It felt like he was really only thinking about himself. Here I was a few months out, surrounded by drama with no protection from these crazies screaming at me on all sides and flooding my comments. I decided not to engage with Lloyd and move on with my life after that. Dangled a carrot in front of my eyes saying he wanted me to have the channel. He threw me under the bus with his actions. I went on to do my own things on YouTube, SB 360 requires clergy to report suspected child abuse or neglect. It all started with my mother. In her early 20s, she was recruited into the Jehovah's Witnesses. TikTok and the gram, making full of myself and not caring because life is new and what the fuck. He got what he wanted, a positive exposure, not actually answering the question and protection once he was done. So I had a, a couple of questions. Um, some of my, I reached out to my subscribers and was like, hey, I'm gonna meet Cedars, this is pretty cool. I saw. Yeah. I saw the video. You saw the video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've noticed there's been a lot of backlash against, particularly you, um, the targeting, I, I think it's because you're definitely the biggest YouTuber for XJW activism right now. And um, there's a lot of, I feel maybe unnecessary hate, but I thought it'd be an opportunity for you to kind of talk about that, your point of view, and give a rebuttal to you know the rest of the community. Uh, I'll do anyway. what I can. I mean, yeah. my, my my response is to, I can only do my activism if, if I focus purely on Watchtower. XJWs, you called out a couple of a couple of people. Um, well, I, I didn't call them out. I showed some clips, but the thing to remember is that was like a one-minute segment. Someone commented, ask Lloyd the real reason why he was removed or stepped down as an elder, and I didn't even know anything about that, so I wanted to, to give you a platform and ability, the opportunity to explain the whatever The real reason? Yeah, yeah. As opposed to what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like, the real reason, where does this wow. come from? Yeah. Well, it's in my book. Um, 
But if you want to know how it's described in my book, yeah. um, I stepped down as an elder because of stuff that was going on in my relationship with Deanna. Mm -hmm. um, we had problems with our marriage and um, I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing as a husband. And at the time I felt it was the business of other people, namely the elders. I was no longer useful to him as a supply. This pattern and behavior is common in narcissists, and since I stood up to him, I wasn't easy to manipulate. It clearly displays the whole, uh, you know what DARVO is? It stands, for <laughs> it stands for Deny, Attack, Reverse, Victim, and Offender. That's exactly oh, it's an it acronym and a tactic. It's a narcissist crap, cool. yeah. Eventually, years later, I ended up tracking down Joel, and we ended up having a really good conversation of what the fuck happened. Uh, when it came out, my reaction to it was like, yo, what the fuck? They, they said my name in there. And, um, oh, that, um, yeah. that was actually just me and Tom. What the fuck? I don't yeah, even, I even know. know. And looking back at it, it's like, yeah, I can tell. I, I, I understand that, that, you know, it would have made you uncomfortable. And that video came out and that was, it was a crucial moment for me. I really saw what Lloyd was. Hey, Cameron's just not a part of this. He was just, you know, that's all I was hoping for. Uh, he made a big old statement that he deleted later about you guys and exposing you. We, cause we never communicated. I had the complete opposite impression of you. I thought that you would just let it go and that that was it for you and that you were okay with the answers that he gave. You know, like even back then you, you weren't comfortable with it. It just makes me feel bad. You know, it's, it's a lesson for me really to just be nicer to people, <laughs> you know, honestly, I feel like I was a different person back then too. I'm not excusing anything. And I know, and I, know I, I just want to say, man, I'm sorry for, for making you feel uncomfortable like that. I, I can't say it any other way. Um, I wish we had talked directly. Finally, I was starting to make sense of what had gone on. I was caught in the crossfire. Really well-spoken guy, Manchester accent, making great videos. I remember saying, wow, this is what we need. What's not to like? I mean, we, we were all like that. So in other words, I wasn't just born a Lloyd hater. Like that just didn't happen. He apparently liked me. Um, I remember one time back in 2013, we talked on the phone for like three hours one night. He invited me to, to write for his publishing company that he was putting together. He told me that my videos gave him something to think about when he was waking up. We had a rapport. Fast forward a little bit. I had seen the AWA thing where he, he doxed a bunch of people. I wasn't affected. I thought it was kind of a, a BS move. Dox, like for those who don't know what dox mean, what is what is doxing? Yeah, he he just outed a bunch of uh, PMO people. He used their first and last names on his, on his on his Facebook. As long as you're you're helping him or he can get something out of you, then you're useful to him. Mm -hmm you're going to get one version of Lloyd. So, you know, he went on a campaign of smearing me. A bunch of the people that went to the 2017 meetup where we were out in Warwick, he was shaming people for hanging out with bad association. One thing people don't really know either is that he started a harassment campaign, a phone call thing, family, work, you know, Tom's mom, she was elderly. She was, she was in hospice type, you know, like she didn't have much, much time. Lloyd called her up with like a, a, a ridiculous threat saying, um, and, and Tom can probably provide you with this. He said, oh, I'm from some law office and you know i hope you're prepared to be sued for everything that your adult son who doesn't even live with you said on the internet and when she sees through it and she's like yeah nothing's gonna happen you creep you know stop calling type stuff he's like or or maybe you'll you'll just wake up with your throats cut and so there was a whole like background to to what this guy well, was said that to her to, to tom's mom tom's mom yeah, they're JWs. Tom is being shunned. And so imagine how awkward that has to make an already awkward situation where you're being shunned by your family. It was always questions that were based off of stuff that he himself wrote that when you ask him about it, he just gets angry at you, starts accusing you. He just starts attacking you. He starts rallying, you know, social pressure against people and weaponizing his audience. It, that's that's what he does. So to see what he's doing now with like people like Alt Worldly and sending letters to, I haven't gotten a letter yet. We'll get one after this video. <laughs> a person with NPD or narcissistic personality disorder or traits, it's all comes down to control and devaluing other people. They find kind-hearted people to control, manipulate, and put down so they can feel empowered. Classic bully. Stop it! Stop it! except that narcissism isn't treatable. Speaking as a therapist, uh, I'm just gonna remind you that whenever I would deal with people who had this particular bent, uh, I, I knew going in, malignant narcissism is not treatable. This person is incapable of having a healthy, normal, loving, respectful relationship, right? So the only person that's gonna change is not gonna be that person who's narcissistic. Who has narcissism or who has high narcissistic traits, doesn't think that they do, or doesn't think that their arrogance is a problem, or who thinks that their level of arrogance actually is self-confidence and or self-esteem. So how do you fix a hole in the wall that someone doesn't see? 
You can't. When you figure them out, they play the victim, spread a smear gossip campaign to control other people's perception of you, so they take their side and not yours. Sound familiar? It sounds a lot like disfellowshipping and excommunication, doesn't it? And person after person that I talk to seemed to be pointing back to Lloyd. Who else had had a hard time with Lloyd? Louise, who had started the JW podcast back in the day, I connected with her. And then Lloyd recommended me. So James, because of my Katie Kitten videos and because I'm searingly intelligent, obviously. <laughs> so James Payton contacted me and said, I'm doing this podcast. Would you be willing to join in? And, and I said, yeah. And um, then the four of us did it for a couple of years together. We interviewed Deborah Francis White a well-known comedian. So we interviewed her because she's an ex-JW. She was snorting coke while she was being interviewed. Oh, my God. Though we didn't know at the time, but we found out afterwards. I'm not I'm not all moral and shit, but I still think that's a bit rude. That's uh, um, pretty unprofessional. <laughs> and she swore a lot, and I swear a lot. God love me, I swear a lot. But mm. I didn't swear on the podcast. And James and Lloyd were, like, um, just awestruck by her. And they swore quite a lot through the podcast and they were like really like fawning puppies. And Lloyd said to her, oh, you're the only XJW comedian out there. And I was really hurt because I'd been doing my little comedy videos and it really like I didn't exist. And I know, I know it's silly. It's really childish. But anyway, so that was my little thing that he'd said that sort of upset me a little bit in private. And I said to him, this was off, off air. We were having a, converse, a private conversation. And I said, oh, you know, um, that thing that you said to Deborah, like I said, I know it's like petty, but kind of upset me a little bit because I've been doing, you know, you know, I've been doing my videos and he got he just got really angry at me he got really he just went off on one he, he got angry that I dare would dare accuse him of anything he was he kind of went into really full-on attack mode and the I, the only way I can describe it is it felt like I was in a court of law because he kept demanding that I repeat verbatim what had been said in order to unpick it so that we could ascertain the intent behind it. If somebody had said to me, oh, Louise, you know that time when you said somebody was this, I'd, and it upset me a little bit, I'd have gone, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I just, it never occurred to me that that would have upset you. I didn't mean it like that at all. No such thing. That's all it needed. It just needed an acknowledgement. Went on for over an hour, and it ended with him repeatedly insisting that I apologise, that I apologise for ever having raised the fact that he could have done this thing it was a real browbeating and Lloyd Lloyd it's me it's me it's Lou I'm your mate I've defended you like I'd been into hate groups there were hate groups that had been made about Lloyd I'd gone in there and defended him fiercely mm -hmm. because I was his mate I worked in Gloucester prison I've worked in a school for really violent children that can't go into mainstream I'm trained in de-escalation both verbally and physically however much I groveled and apologized it wouldn't end when I'd apologized and he was satisfied I, well I just cried I was really really upset like I didn't feel that I'd been heard at all mm. there was he didn't give a, like not an inch not a millimeter he never at any point acknowledged that I had feel, and I wasn't like accusing him I wasn't saying you've done this and you've done that because I, I don't do that I always frame it in you know I feel like you may not realize mm -hmm. but I these are my feelings you can't tell somebody they're not feeling that but what Lloyd will tell you is that you are being irrational and hysterical and therefore you are not entitled to feel like that the JWs and Lloyd have a history and a pattern of hurting those close to them and work with them blowing up and going off about little petty things. Don't think about it. Don't look at it. And yet he was entitled enough to tell other people how they should live their lives. This, this is what mental illness looks like, my dear viewer. If you've been confused about why JWs act the way they do and why Lloyd is acting the way he does, this is mental functioning illness. This is why the JWs are largely against therapy, in my opinion. And it would be a finish when you go to this quack and he messes you up worse than you are right now. And it would be my fault because I said, Kim, go to this guy. Lloyd's behavior to me was shitty to me. And whenever I ran into other creators, most have had run-ins with Lloyd and described him as opinionated brute. I have not had very positive interactions with Lloyd personally. And many of my friends who worked with him on like the JW podcast and stuff like that, 
uh, most of them didn't have very good interactions with him either. Boundaries are something toxic, unstable, and manipulative people hate. He had just released a video where he was responding to the voicemail of somebody who's transgender. He put in the title, a transgender. It's not a transgender, a transgender person. Like borderline slurry? Yeah, like a little pejorative. People that are usually transphobic will say stuff like that, like a transgender. Dropping a hard Y. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that too. That's fucked that up. Too. And I was gentle about it. I was as gentle as I could be because I was actually really, really afraid of pissing him off. Like I was sweating. I was like, he is gonna, he's gonna get angry and he's gonna block me because he's gonna think I I'm correcting him and telling him what to do and shit. And I know he does not like that. And he would block people really quickly. If you're blocked by Lloyd Evans, you're pretty much marked in the community. People think you're a bad person after that, which is, I know that sounds dumb, but like, that's how it works. You're disfellowship activist. You're the gutter activist. I'm sure that messes with people, you know, that there was an error. He seemed a little uh, miffed that I even brought it up or pointed it out. He had changed it once, but it, he hadn't done it correctly. So I told him, no, no, actually you were supposed to do this. And he was like, oh, so you want me to change it again? And I was like, uh, yes, I have updated my video to your preferences. That sounds a little, I'm not, I, you know, it's not explicitly or overtly like rude, obviously. It's just like, kind of like, you know, that backhanded rudeness that people do. I told him I was from Crusaders and everything. He mentioned that he was going to finally do a live stream of Crusaders with Mark and Kimmy O'Donnell. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing it. He didn't invite me or anything. Which he, is and he said that to you directly? Yeah, he told me directly the thing, which is fine. I, you know, I didn't expect an invite or anything, but I just thought it was interesting. Uh, it's very small. I think that's why we're pointing this out. It's because it's all, a microaggression. Yeah, are signs of a, a unstable, toxic person. Days later, where the stream is happening, mm -hmm. and I go to watch it because I'm, you know, want to hear what Mark and Kimmy have to say, and I want to tell them, you know, thanks for your work in the documentary and work outside of the documentary. I, I could see Lloyd reading while he was on the screen. He could see he was like, oh no. Toward the end, I actually asked Lloyd. I was like, yeah, Lloyd, weren't you supposed to be in the documentary? I could have sworn I saw you being filmed. I know because I recognize the, the director because he was my director. I know. I saw him recording you. He was like, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, Asha, lots of cameras following me around all the time. And you know how it is. He was just trying to brush off. Now, fast forward, he went off to Thailand saying he needed a mental break, but really he was getting the Gok Gok Pepper Grind 9000 in Thailand while he was married. I'm starting a babysitting service. Children are my passion. Okay, you can't say the words children and passion and have your face and now plays the victim. Closer to the abyss than ever. But don't worry, I'm too much of a coward to do anything because I love Deanna and the kids. Do you even listen to yourself when you talk? I drift in and out. Now, fast forward, Lloyd is admitting that he cheats on his wife. I'm taking a break for the sake of my mental health. In the land of Thailand, known for underage sex trafficking, which is modern day slavery, and considering that is the exact same thing that came up when I had woken up five years ago, I noticed that there's evidence of patterns and him cussing out people Fuck you. for calling Sorry. him out. Seems pretty sus, bro. So I went to Kim for comment. She had intended on divorcing him while he was in, in Thailand. She told him on a Zoom call and he came back early. And that's because she told him Holy that she shit. wanted a divorce. And so he came back to come into the house. And as soon as he gets in the house, he, he gets in her head. And he then manipulates her. And so I still believe she will divorce him. I don't know, because obviously I'm out of the equation. I get really upset when people say that I'm not her friend. It's not, people don't understand what, what really is going on and what really happened. It, it makes me so angry, sorry. I very rarely cry, but I care about her. I do, and it's just disgusting. But if I say anything, then he's going to then go back and yell at her because why did you tell her? The community needed to know so they could make an informed decision. It's a public interest thing. Like, that's my opinion. Around the time that I woke up, Sherry and Sasha D'Souza did an interview with Lloyd and they're Australian and they're from the same city that I live in. Got in contact with them. Then I came to know Lloyd through them. Our patrons of his at the time. He heard my story, background, the day that I met him, 2018. And then I did my first um, Watchtower in Focus episode, uh, which was the subpoena warfare. Yeah, so then the rest was history. A few things. And I think I officially joined the JW Watch team in 2000 and. 19 around june july and then i became the head of operations of jw watching two and a half years was there ever a conversation of hey would like to no. compensate you for anything no and and for the record even if he had i wouldn't have accepted it that wasn't my motivation i was an above tier um, patron of his and so and i have been since 2018 or 2019 no, that? Almost Holy shit. Straight away. but i believed in his work i think where it became 
a wake up for me was there are people like producer Bob who has a full-time job, ran all the social media stuff for a very long time, did a really good job. You know, when I heard that he'd employed a PR manager, I'm like, well, there was no offer of financial remuneration to producer Bob. I don't care, but it would have been nice for her. The other issues aside, that's really wrong. I wouldn't like to see people going in without having, like, you know, in the future, if someone wants to do voluntary work for him, that's fine, but be aware of what actually is the situation, mm-hmm. not what you think it is. In American money, I think he makes like six figures. Oh, definitely, yeah. And six figures here, like that's that's pretty rare for anybody to make six figures in America. That's like you're talking like mm. less than five percent of the population. Cash in Croatia is probably like seven or eight figures. I'm assuming. Oh no, it's more than that. <laughs> more than that? Um, yeah, no, no. In Croatian money, it's a seven figure. In in Australian money, it's somewhere between two and two two hundred thousand and two hundred fifty thousand. Mm. I was surprised. I didn't realize. I don't know. Lee and I had a different relationship, and we didn't. We fought. Like you know, just to argue with him it was a constructive argument it was always no 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 but this and that and he didn't argue back and we come to a place where we either agree to disagree or we'd agree or we compromise or you know but at the end of the day it was his channel I would give my opinion and then he would make a decision more aware of it now but I didn't see it until the 16th of December 2021 shortly after new year an XJW in the community who had expressed to me concern the way Lloyd was behaving online. And I said, thank you very much. I'll go and find out what's going on. I spoke to him. I had tried to get him to get help and I couldn't get to that point with him. And I was very frustrated because it didn't matter what I did. You know, to get off social media and to to just relax, was upset with the way he'd been behaving with Diana. I was upset. The fact that he was just picking fights unreasonably and unnecessarily on social media because he was in a bad mood because he hadn't got what he wanted. And then we find out someone had attempted suicide not his fault but what happens if something happened one day and somebody successfully attempted because of him being an idiot and I clicked it how people in the XJW community are feeling then I have no regard for how you're feeling you've acted like an asshole you've behaved unethically oh god everything is textbook narcissism he wouldn't think that she would tell me the truth so again he's manipulating and trying to control the situation but why is it that you know do you have anybody else to talk to do you have anyone else that can support you like do you have friends or you know family around and she's like no and I'm like why don't you have any friends And she said, because um, Lloyd doesn't like my friends. She's really in an abusive relationship and um, what was going on. And she was just fucked up. And I knew that if I turned on him, which is exactly what happened, the minute I turned on him, he then started to work on stopping Deanna from having any contact with me and producer Bob. You know, and this is why I say if if I speak out and it makes him angry and she then acts, I hope in time she'll realise that I did this because I'm her friend and I care about her and that she's in an abusive relationship and that one day she'll think she did me a favour, I hope. I hope so too. He's an asshole. JW community and XJW community is treated Mm. because we're just constantly groomed to accept what's not normal. That's 100%. It's just, I think he said that he was sorry to his wife and he'll continue to be sorry to his wife for the rest of his life, no matter what happens between them. Where does that affect? I have a problem with that. Here's why. In saying that he's sorry about his wife, not about the behavior that caused it in the first place. I don't accept that as a real apology. That's not a real apology. That's a bullshit scapegoat apology. Continues to do that behavior because he wants to have a monopoly and he wants to be able to control. He wants to fear people. There are activists that I've spoken to who I won't name, who I've asked them the question, are you are you careful what you say? Yes. And the reason they're careful is because of Lloyd. So he is not only controlling who says what and what does who, but he's controlling content of other people's channels. And I find that's the reason why we're here because he did it to me. <laughs> well, you're another one. Oh, as a child sex abuse survivor from the Jehovah's Witnesses myself. I don't want this fucking guy representing us. He's already proven he's a piece of shit with how he treats people. He has the can't even do the bare minimum of treating people mm-hmm. with respect. We're working for him for free, which in my opinion is another form of manipulative slavery. He's picking a vulnerable audience. And I don't want this fucking guy who sees prostitutes in or sex workers in highly sus areas like Croatia and uh and, and Thailand, which is known for having high amounts of of uh 
sexual slavery. Lloyd go to an established sex workplace where it's regulated because there are places in Eastern Europe and other countries you can go to where it's established and regulated. It's like it's nobody's business. He's he's trying to lay the ground for it, for it to be covered up in the future. The same yeah. thing. If Deanna was watching this, what would you say to her? I reiterate my apology to you. You know what I apologize to you for. I love you very much and I care about you and the girls greatly, even though you may not see that right now. I don't care what the community have to say. It's between you and me. You know how to contact me. I will always be here and we will pick up where he left off. I should, I'll tell you, um, the reason that she she just complies and does it because she, if she doesn't, he's scared. she's scared he's going to kill himself because he's threatened her so many times that it just becomes a belief. That was my next question is like, what does he have over... Deanna, like, I don't feel like he would have anything over her to manipulate. Narcs look for a way to hold something mm. above you. That's why they mirror you in the beginning. Yeah. So they can get your deepest, darkest secrets and failures. And then now they have something to blackmail you with. Mm. So he has nothing if he's going to say, like, I'm going to take my life if, if you don't get me those condoms or or if you leave me or et cetera, et cetera. Mm. God, she's, she is an abu horribly abused woman. Oh, mate, you've no idea. Fuck. Her <sighs> self-esteem has got to be this high off the ground. And she has felt the loss of someone she loves. And so she has that. That's a trigger. So if he threatens to kill himself, she's immediately triggered because of the loss of her brother. Um, oh. So, and that's why she reacts the way she does. And um, and that's how he controls her. Sure. I can prove all of this. I have all of the correspondence and all of the messages, the emails, everything. I'm not fucking sorry. You sorry got caught while these are fucking women in Thailand, you know, at home upset. And I'm sitting there going, how the fuck did I get put in this situation? You know, she was questioning him about why he'd you know been having affairs and rather rather and he said well he'd been accused of that and uh, was forced to put that disclosure in his book so he might as well go and just do it <laughs> jesus fucking christ and i'm like why was he forced oh she didn't God. force him to put it in there he put it in there because he didn't want he had wanted to have a plausible excuse allegation of, of csa ever came out that he was like, i talked about it in my book like narcissism is developed within the first seven years of a child's life and whether they can consciously or subconsciously admit what's happening they do understand power dynamics children mm. i think it's three times more likely they're going to seek an abusive relationship because of their childhood and what they saw if they don't they're going to become the abuser and become the narcissist the reason they put up with Lloyd's behavior, because if they don't, if they shun him, he will take the grandchildren away from them. So I went to Lloyd for comment. He left me on red. At the end of the day, in my experience, narcissists are extremely untrustworthy people. You don't just trip and fall into some gooch or use the highway as a slip and slide to land on some dick. Cheating on your wife in secrecy is a choice. You're like 50, bro. There's no excuse by now. Deanna, I really hope you see this. The XJW community cares about you. And I know that what we are seeing is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how insane Lloyd is most likely abusing you. I say this because we're waiting for you. All right now I want to hear from Deanna. I don't want to see text or an account or a Twitter without Lloyd's influence. I can t wrong Gary you that he's got that poor woman under so much emotional pressure that she's probably doesn't even know what is up from down and left from right. Using XJW donations to pay for prostitutes in Thailand is the same as JW's paying for lawyers to hide child pictures in my opinion. If you have gotten close to Lloyd and he screwed you over, please email me and make sure to have proof and we'll have a conversation and see if it's a good fit. If you found this information really really useful. Do not subscribe, don't follow me on TikTok, and don't follow me on Instagram to see more, unless you're Deanna.